What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday, coming to you this week a day earlier. If you guys are new to my channel, I go over every game in football. I do college and I do pros, but throughout the duration of this season, uh, my college videos have been on Wednesdays and the pro videos have been on Thursdays. I'm moving the schedule up one day. That'll free up Thursday and Friday. I have some new videos I'm bringing to the channel. Thursdays will be designated for Thursday night football, putting together a same game parlay for you guys. And on Fridays, we're going to go over a college football parlay, a real lottery ticket type of a wager, a really, really high payout, an incredible odds type of a thing. Um, and I'm going to put some effort into it, really going to try to cash a huge lottery ticket play for you guys. So look forward to that video on Friday. If you're new to the channel or you haven't yet, again, double check, make sure you're subscribed. I do whiteboard winning free picks every single week, coming off another 2-0 week. That is back-to-back 2-0 weeks on the whiteboard, guys. That brings the record this year to 16 wins and only 7 losses, about a 70% winning percentage on the free picks. Hopefully appreciate that. Definitely hit the thumbs up button, guys. You've been slacking on that a little bit. And, um, you know, we are consistently getting like four, almost 500 likes on my videos. And, you know, it's down to a couple hundred. And I understand, you know, sometimes the videos don't always get like the three, 4,000 views that they do. But I, I, I'm one of the best in the sports betting industry from my discipline, from, from just wanting a fair shake, from, from doing everything the right way, right? I don't cut corners. I do things the right way. I try to uh, spread my knowledge and, and, and just be fair to everybody. And, and it's no different with something like that. It's no different than the channel here. You know, all these hours every single week bringing you guys the videos, doing free picks for you. Um, meet me in the middle. That's all I ask. Just meet me in the middle. I'll keep the videos rocking. You know, give me some incentive. I want to do more for you guys. I'm doing it this week, changing the schedule, bringing you more free stuff on Thursday and Friday. Just go ahead and just tap a couple buttons for me. That's all I ask guys. It's free. It takes a millisecond. Click that thumbs up. Let's try to get today's video to, I don't know, three, 400 likes. If we don't quite get to that margin, you know, maybe this will be the last week and we'll go ahead and, and wrap up the whiteboard. Uh, with a nice winning record for the year. So uh, give me a little incentive to keep it rocking and rolling. Of course, I'll keep it rocking and rolling, at least for this last week here. Um, guys, Tuesdays, usually the recap video. So let me get it out of the way. And then we're just going to run through the games, man. Stanford winning over Louisville. I mean, there was some really, really crazy stuff that happened. But you know what happened with me. Another winning week in college football. My God. I mean, five straight weeks. You see it right there on the screen. Clients are happy with the college football, man. Three units, 4.3, 3.3, 4.4, 3.1. That's 18.1 units. Five straight winning weeks in college football. I'm as dialed in as it gets. Uh, we were three and one. Uh, in terms of our record this past week. Like I said, it was a tricky slate. Usually I have like eight, nine, sometimes 10 plays on college football. We only had four. We went three and one, just barely missed on a teaser. That was the only loss. And um, yeah, threw a little bit of money back with NFL. So let me just quickly bring it up in front of me here, tell you exactly what I wagered on. And uh, we'll get into this week, week 13 for college football. So super quick in college football, like I said, it was just a couple wagers and, and don't buy the connection here, guys. It'll clear up in just a second. Sometimes the Wi-Fi just kind of goes in and out for a little bit. Um, but yeah, super simple week. We had, uh, let me bring it up right here. We had Florida plus four and a half over LSU. Perfect situational spot. LSU uh, coming off a brutal loss, an embarrassing loss at home. Brian Kelly mad at his players and official elimination from the college football playoff conversation. That is a huge lack of motivation going into the swamp is already hard enough. We took the four and a half points line close at two and a half, a beautiful ticket, 2.2 units hit that nice uh, Tennessee and Georgia under 48 and a half, a little bit of a sweat, but I do think that first half was way more offense than anybody expected. So the under was still a home run. It was our biggest play of the week. 3.45, almost three and a half units on that play. Um, and then we had Kansas, a little straight bet on Kansas. We took the three, it closed at two and a half, another beautiful ticket with closing line value, put 1.2, 1.2 units on that. Um, so, so straight bets three and one. And then we had a teaser, uh, three teams, eight point adjustment and, uh, plus money. We went for a plus one thirty. Kansas. We moved up to 10 and a half, uh, Georgia. We moved down to two and a half. We get above the 10, through the seven, through the six, through the four, all the key numbers with Kansas, Georgia, we bring down, get them under a field goal. And then all we needed was Kansas State money line. And not only did they lose, they got murdered by Arizona State. Didn't see it coming. That is a tough place to play at night. They were off of a bye week, off of a bad loss to Houston and still in the running for the Big 12 title. I thought it was a smash spot. I thought Kansas State would have covered the spread as is. 
But you know what? Is what it is. You can't have them all. We what we try to get the four no sweep in college this week. Came up just a bit short. Is what it is. We go three and one game three units. NFL, a little bit more of a struggle. Uh, did get absolutely ripped off on, on, on two big plays, but you know, it is what it is. It's gambling. It's part of it. We started off on Thursday. We took a team total over with the Eagles. We got in at 26 and a half, closed 27 and a half. That was 3.1 units. How did it lose? Jake Elliott, two missed field goals and a missed extra point. We missed the total by half of a point. Brutal start to the week. Brown's money line just threw about a half unit on that. Took a shot there. Missed that one. Rams money line. We threw two units on that. Hit that. Uh, Bill's money line put, put, uh, you know, a little bit over half of a unit on that wanted to go heavier, love the spot for the bills. But when Mahomes is on the other side as an underdog, it, 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 you can only stomach putting so much money on a wager like that. So didn't go too heavy on that, but cash that ticket. We had a teaser where we went one for two. Um, I forgot what the winning leg was, but the, the losing leg was the Falcons. We took the Falcons from a short underdog on the road in Denver got them up to plus eight through all the keen numbers, typical teaser. They came up short. And then we had a same game parlay uh, uh, just uh, recently here on Monday night and everything cashed except one thing, Jake Ferguson, two catches concussion first quarter, got one catch 11 yards. Uh, the Cowboys tight ends were uh, clearly part of their game plan. He probably would have got six or seven catches in that game. They used the tight ends a lot. Um, an injury. I mean, it sucks. It's frustrating. Everything else cash. We had Texans on an alt spread an an alternative over, uh, Nico Collins, I think just 40 yards receiving and then mix in 50 yards on the ground. And then the Jake Ferguson, just simply two receptions. He gets one and then he gets a concussion in the first quarter. And that was a two unit wager at plus money. So between that one and then the Jake Elliott kicking debacle with Philly, um, you know, a 3.1 unit play and a two unit play, you give those two back. It would have been another really, really big, really, really awesome winning week in NFL. So we throw a little bit money back, uh, but NFL is still absolutely fine. We are so dialed in. I mean, you lose stuff like that. That's fine. I love the picks. I love the way I'm seeing the board. Um, shit happens. It's gambling. We're still up, uh, in the last four weeks of NFL combined. We've only lost one of those weeks this last week, and we're still up 11 Point one units. I didn't quite get the uh, get the number in there, uh, but but up over eleven units in that time span. Let me bring up Fanduel. Let's start running through these games, man. Super exciting week. That is a little bit better. Cool. Let's just refresh it. Get the most up to date numbers we can here. Let's go, man. Let's go. Um, here we go. Seven o'clock. Akron, Kent State. No idea. No idea. Um. God, 10 and a half, 10 and a half in this one. I think I'd rather play the over. I'd have to lay it with Akron. I'd have to lay the 10 and the hook. I'd have to. They're the better football team. Western Michigan, Central Michigan, I have no idea. Pry rivalry, pry take the points. Not familiar with them. I stick to mainly the power, you know, the, the good schools. I tell you guys week after week, you know, just because just there's games going on on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday, you don't have to bet them. They're shitty. They're low-end programs. It's volatile. There's a lot of variance with the performance, the coaching. Everything is just not as predictable as betting on, like, a Georgia or an Alabama. It, it, it's for a reason, okay? N Northern Illinois and Miami, Ohio. I like Miami, Ohio on the money line. Could they absolutely lose the game? Yes. Should you be betting on this just because you're bored and there's something to bet on? Not from a professional standpoint, not if you actually want to make money long term. If you're just doing it for entertainment purposes, maybe Ohio and Toledo. Um, I'll take Ohio here. I'll take Ohio. I'll take the points, though. I'll take the two and a half. Pretty low total in that game. That'll be competitive. NC State, Georgia Tech, lay it. NC State's terrible. Um, hopefully, it's not too much of a flat spot. It's still a Thursday night game at home. I think they'll do pretty good here. Um, Offensively, they should cover the number. Temple and Texas San Antonio. Lay it. Lay it. 15 and a half. Sure. Sure. Lay it. It's under 20. Temple's bad. Purdue, Michigan State. Interesting. Interesting. How serious will Michigan State take this game? I mean, they're coming off the L uh, Illinois. I just worry about offensively. Michigan State, do they have enough offense to pull away from Purdue by margin, by two full touchdowns is, is what we need here. I don't know. I don't know. I lean towards the under. I lean towards the under in that game. 
UNLV, San Jose State. Um, situationally, I think I got to go with UNLV here. I know the seven and a half with a team that just looked competitive against Boise. It's tempting. I don't like it situationally. It is a Friday night home game. That is a significant advantage. They do have a good offense. I think UNLV is, is just a little bit too tough in the trenches. I'll lay the points. Wake Forest in Miami. Uh, this is probably just a blowout. I mean, Miami off a loss. They need some style points. This is a smash spot. They're going to kill them, I think. They're going to kill them. Maybe just go team total over with Miami because Miami still doesn't have a defense, so that's always a little bit sketchy when you're trying to cover a big number. Um, Miami, lay it. Illinois, Rutger, really surprised about this. It is early in the week, but we can check some early money splits for this game. Um, where's this one? I was just uh, just a little bit surprised. A little bit surprised here to see Illinois as a short uh, dog in this spot. Definitely a little bit on the surprising side. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the early sharps are on Rutgers. I have to agree, man. Um, I'm, I'm not stupid. I mean, last week, Kansas plus two and a half, really on the road in Provo against undefeated BYU. And it was only Kansas plus two and a half. Did you bozos really bet BYU there? This is kind of the same, same sort of thing. Illinois coming off a win over Michigan state. Now they go on the road to kind of a tough physical team. Give me Rutgers money line at home. I bet they get it done. SMU and Virginia. Ah, uh, boy, SMU in Virginia. <sighs> if this was like an 11, I would take the points with Virginia. Nine and a half is a pass. I still am taking them, though. I'm still taking Virginia. I think Virginia might have just enough guts in a game like this to squeak out a cover, not win the game, but I do think they can cover this one. North Carolina and BC, a three and a half point spread. Here you go. Whiteboard winning free pick of the week. Give me BC at home plus the three and a half. North Carolina laying three and a hook on the road against BC. No. And I know the quarterback situation. I'm well aware of it. No. <laughs> Give me BC plus three and a half. Um, Indiana. How about this one, guys? Whew. It's up to 12 and a half. Seen some movement with this one. Indiana, Ohio State, 12 and a half point spread. Um, I think you got to lay it, man. I think you got to lay it. Indiana, I've been, I've, been, I've been saying negative things about them all year. Washington, if they had any type of discipline and, and didn't throw interceptions at the worst possible time, if they didn't go for it on fourth down multiple times and come up short, they would have beat Indiana outright on the road. Indiana at Ohio State, I think Ohio State shows them um, you know, congrats. You've had a great year. We're Ohio State. We run the Big Ten most of the time. Sorry, you're still Indiana. Lay it. And uh probably look at the under in that game, to be honest. Under 52 and a half. I think Ohio State's defense is gonna give that team big problems. Ole Miss and Florida, 10 and a half points here. Well, I told you guys I was on Florida last week. We bet them at plus four and a half, didn't even need the points. Um, you know, does that, does that momentum carry over or does LSU just suck? And they're in a flat spot after getting their third loss and pretty much knowing the college football playoff is, uh, is over for them. <sighs> is Florida overvalued now because of that? But can we trust Ole Miss on the road? I mean, this is uh man, there's some contradiction stuff here. I think I'd lay it, man. I think I'd lay it. I was on Florida last week. It's the swamp. They're going to be fired up. It's going to be a great environment. <sighs> Ole Miss, it, it might be in that mindset where it's like, forget trying to win by margin. If they can just simply win their games, they'll be okay. God, it's a tough one. I think I'd lay it, though. I think I'd lay it. I think I'd lay it with Ole Miss. Sam Houston State, Jacksonville State pass. No idea. Iowa and Maryland. I'll take the points with Maryland. We've pretty much just been printing money for six or seven weeks now in football. Um, if you guys hesitated to get on my client list for this past weekend, well, we had a rare losing week. Um, I'm seeing the board great. I love the slates, man. I've already looked through them. I've already sent out plays to the client list already. Some big ones. I think we already have four plays 
It's going to be a big week. It's going to be a lot of volume, a lot of big plays. We're going for a home run this week. Um, if you hesitated, if you didn't get in last week, get in now. You dodged the one losing week in the mix. Hopefully we can get another four, five, six, seven weeks in a row winning, printing money like we have been. Um, really, really excited, man. We're going to try to shoot for a 20 unit week. Uh, just can't stress it enough. The link to my website in the description. If you just want a week of picks, it's 29 bucks. It's already dirt cheap. It's like half a tank of gas in your car. Um, but a lot of people, they just go for the monthly. It saves you on unit price. It's basically a whole week for free. Uh, an entire month is only 89. So, you know, don't spend 30, just grab a month. You see my numbers long-term. Is there going to be a couple losses in the mix? Yeah. It's sports betting. You, you can't win everything. Um, uh, but if you get a month of my picks, you're going to be in profit. So, um, big weekend ahead. You'll pay for your subscription this week. I'll take the points with Maryland. I, I, Iowa, man, they're, uh, yeah, no. After watching that UCLA game, uh-uh. No, no, no. Lane six and a half on the road. It's just like they were at UCLA. Absolutely not. I'll take Maryland in the points. UMass and Georgia, lay it. I don't know. I mean, does Georgia care? Probably not. Could they cover 42 and a half without caring? Probably. Lay it. You can't bet on Massachusetts there. No, thank you. Uh, same thing here. UTEP and Tennessee, lay it, especially with this one, because this is Tennessee off the loss. Right, at least Georgia got the win in that game. Tennessee off a loss. They love to beat up on bad teams. We saw early in the year. I don't think the spread's high enough. UTEP, UTEP, really. Um, yeah, lay it. Western Kentucky Liberty should be a good game. I kind of lean uh, Western Kentucky in that one. Um, I'll take the point and a half with them. Liberty, I don't know. Something's just not quite right with them this year. Kind of disappointing. Charleston Southern and Florida State, no idea. Maybe a kind of get your get your frustration from the year out on a bad team. So maybe just lay it with Florida State. They might win about like 50-0 or something. Bowling Green and Ball State, I'll lay the points here. 11 and a half on the road is a little bit steep. Was hoping it was just going to be, you know, somewhere a little bit north of a touchdown. 11 and a half, a little bit sketchy. I'll still lay it. Race UAB, no idea. New Mexico State, Middle Tennessee, absolutely no idea. JMU and App State, I'll leave the points with JMU. I don't care that the hook is on there. App State, you know, bad, bad football team. FIU, Kennesaw State, no idea. Charlotte and FAU, um, I'd probably go Charlotte money line there. Um, can't trust FAU right now. Arizona, TCU, tough, man. Very, very tough. I mean, Arizona, they got that dub, didn't they? Did they not? After all the frustration, they got that dub last week. Yes, they did. They did. They did over Houston. You know, I don't know. They got that one, but Houston, they were coming off that, you know, crazy win over over Kansas State. So that was a good situational spot for Arizona to finally get one. Now you're playing just a much better team. I'll lay the points with TCU. South Alabama, Southern Miss, no idea. It would have to be it would have to be South Bama or pass. Southern Miss is bad, bad. UM Monroe, Arc State, no idea. Tulsa and South Florida. I'll take the points. Northwestern and Michigan. Um Michigan. Michigan lane 11 and a half with their offense. I feel like you just you can't you can't do that. The total in the game is only 37 and a half. A little bit worried that it could just be 20 to zero. <laughs> I mean, Northwestern's going to struggle to score for sure. But uh, I just don't know how motivated Michigan is, man. It's been just such a drastic change year over year. Northwestern in town. I don't know. Um, God, I, I kind of want to take the points with Northwestern. Maybe just play the under, under 37 and a half. This literally could be like 17 0, uh, uh, 17 3, 20 to 3. I don't know. Low scoring. BYU, Arizona State. Tough, 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 tough. Um, Arizona State's the better team. BYU's been extremely fraudulent just about all year. Should have lost outright to Oklahoma State. Um, Should have lost outright to, uh, who was it the other day that almost got him? Wasn't Kansas. It was the game prior to that. Um, well, forget it. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to waste time here. Uh, the point is they could easily have three, maybe four losses. Um, but they're off of a loss and Arizona state is off 
of a really impressive win on the road at Kansas State. Situationally, this strongly favors BYU. But undoubtedly, they're just not the better football team. Um, Kansas State is definitely fraudulent, so I don't know how much stock we put in Arizona State. That was still a night game in Manhattan against Kansas State. It was a pretty good coach. Um, it was a crappy game from the quarterback. <sighs> I think I think the line is telling you, though. I mean, here we go. BYU off of a loss. You think it's a bounce-back spot, and you can get three and the hook? It just looks too easy. I think Arizona State, man, it just continues to be disrespected. I think I think they just keep it rocking. I'll lay the points. I'll lay the points. Probably look at uh, maybe look at an over over forty eight and a half in that game. Colorado, Kansas. I'll take Kansas. Colorado is just not a good football team. Um, man, they just every week they get the perfect spots. Everything they just really are fortunate. Um, love the energy they're playing with, but. They're becoming the BYU. I mean, they're 16 in the country. They're racking up all these wins. They're overvalued. Not necessarily overrated, but overvalued in terms of betting on them. Um, Kansas is a damn good football team. They got some professionals on the team. They're better in the trenches. Way better coach. Uh, 5X. A 5X advantage at the coaching position. Um, I wish there wasn't construction going on in Lawrence. If this was actually, you know... At the, at the stadium they played so well in, this would be a smash spot. I'll still go with Kansas, um, but I'll take the two and a half points. UCF and W, I'll go I'll go money line UCF. Uh, West Virginia, man, you, you, you have to move on from Neil. You have to move on from Neil Brown. You have to. Last week, Baylor in town, destroyed. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think the line is telling you who's going to win this one. It's just like last week, Baylor, a short favorite. I mean, just simply decades and decades and decades of Mountaineers being so good at football and, 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 and my, and, you know, home field advantage for them is one of the best in the entire country. That's enough to just keep lines down, regardless of how the team is doing. They're not the better team. UCF is a better football team. I'll take them money line UCF Citadel Clemson blowout. God, 50 and a half though. Holy cow. 50 and a half and the total's only 60. <laughs> um, wow. I, I'm going to, I'm going to say lay the points, man. I'm going to say lay the 50 and a half Clemson needs style points. And it's hard to even get into that category when, when you're talking about the Citadel on the other side, if they can Win this game 80-0, to zero, I think they want to. I'll go with Clemson, laying 50. <laughs> That's cra it's crazy. Kentucky and Texas. I kind of want to take the points here, 20 and a half. Just, just the defense uh, might be enough here to keep Kentucky in it. If they can put like 13 points on the board, which is a stretch, and I don't even know if they can get to 10. Um, I don't know. Texas, uh, Texas just has to win games, man. They don't need the style points. They're in their position is just fine. You know, that's how you got to start looking at the X factors this time of year. Texas doesn't have to beat this team by 40. They're not ranked like 15 in the country. They'll just get the win. It'll be comfortable. Even like a 17 or a 16 or even a two touchdown win is comfortable. The total is only 46 and a half. I guess I would lean Kentucky plus 20 and a half. They're just, they're a miserable team. It's its hard to really stomach putting money on them, but that's a lot of points, and I would wait on it too. I bet the money will come in on Texas, and it probably will get above 21 at some point. Stanford and Cal, got to go Cal here. Just sit, situational football. Stanford off a massive. They were a 20-point underdog, or 22 was it? Somewhere up there to, uh, to Louisville, man. Coming off just a huge win. Now you're at Cal. I'll lay the points with Cal. ECU, North Texas. I'll go North Texas money line there. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. I mean, Oklahoma State, man, just a miserable, miserable, miserable year. I, I think I'm going to go with an over in this game, um, but there could be a lot of rushing. There could be a lot of ground and pound in this game for both teams, just a ton of rushing game. 
that could chew clock, especially if some of those drives take up time and only result in a field goal. It would be hard to get to a total of 67 and a half, but yeah, I don't know. I just think it's kind of just trading scores. I'll lean over the huge total of 67 and a half and I'll lean towards Texas tech, uh, Wisconsin. Where am I? I just lost my little thing there. Wisconsin, Nebraska, Give me Nebraska. I'll go money line there at minus 130. I'm not going to have any points here, but you know, Wisconsin, man, they put their heart and soul in the last week. Come up just a just a hair shy, man. Come up just short on knocking Oregon off. It's a night game in Madison. Now you got to just, you know, put your cleats back on and uh, you know, let's get back out there and you know, this could be a total flat spot for Wisconsin. Nebraska, uh pretty good effort in their last game. Uh, but it'll be another week with Dana Holgerson there gelling with that offense. I expect the offense to be better here. I like Nebraska to get this done at home. Uh, San Diego State, Utah State. I really don't know that one. I really don't know. I have no opinion. Uh, same with that one. Penn State, Minnesota. Kind of want to take the points here. I kind of want to take the points. Penn State, another team. Just win, just win. It's a road game and you know, road conference game against Minnesota. Uh, not, not, nothing to be shy about, even if you have to win a nail biter. Um, I think I'm taking the points, man. 12 and a half, man. I love if it was over two touchdowns, but Minnesota is going to be fired up for this one. I think they have enough here to, to, to keep it competitive. And, and this is a game where, you know, the back door should be open. When you're looking at a spread of 12 and a half points, this could be. Uh, a, a 17 point margin, you know, this could be a, uh, you know, a two touchdown margin, 16, 17, anywhere in that range. One last score at the end in junk time uh, by Minnesota gets you back under that margin of 12 and a half for a cover. I think Penn state wins this one by seven to 10 points, somewhere in that range. I think 12 and a half is just a bit North of where uh, you want to be laying it with Penn state in this particular spot with the total of 45 and a half being low. Yeah. Minnesota plus the points would be the, would be my play. Uh, this game's just a joke, but lay it with South Carolina. They'll probably roll Louisiana tech, Arkansas, <sighs> Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas is very inconsistent. Now you can see behind me, I gave out Arkansas last week. Um, I've I've watched them literally quit on the field versus good teams. Maybe they just have fun in this one and just put it on a lesser opponent. I guess I'll lay the 21 and a half with Arkansas. Pitt and Louisville. Give me Louisville. Situational football. Pitt's just been in kind of a downhill spiral here, man. Last like four weeks, pretty miserable. Um, Louisville's off an upset uh, loss to Stanford. Now you're back home against Pitt much better football team. I'll lay it with Louisville, Missouri, Mississippi state kind of want to take miss state in the points. I mean, Missouri just bad situational spot. Yeah. Put your heart and soul in that South Carolina game. Thought you won it minute left. You get your heart broken. Season's totally done. It's been a down year for them. Definitely under what most people had is, is season expectations. Now you're on the road versus you know, probably the worst team in the whole conference, but you're laying seven and a half. I just, I don't know. I know Mississippi State's unbearably bad, but I don't know. Maybe they catch Missouri sleeping. Maybe they win this thing outright. Troy, Louisiana, no idea. Washington State, Oregon State, no idea. Washington State definitely wins that. That feels like just a little bit too many points. I really don't have a good opinion on that one, though. Um, but, but Washington State, one of those teams that, that, you know, if they even want a chance, they they need the style points. Georgia State, Tech State, don't know. Boise State, Wyoming, <sighs> lay it, lay it, square, bland, boring. I don't know. I don't know how you could take Wyoming, 22 and a half. It doesn't feel like enough. Baylor and Houston, give me Baylor. Baylor's playing good football right now. A win in Morgantown, even with Neil Brown and some of the injuries that West Virginia's had. That's still impressive. That's still impressive. The offense looks good to me. West Virginia's defense is bad, but so is Houston's. Um, Houston does kind of have this habit of being a shitty team overall, but stealing some big wins randomly, kind of like that Kansas State game. Um, and I think one other, but um, yeah, I'll go ahead and lay the seven and a half with Baylor. 
Uh, Bama and OU, that's a good one there. I'll I'll probably have to lay the points with Alabama. Uh, I, I'm just worried about, even at home, I'm worried about Oklahoma being able to keep pace offensively with Bama. I think eventually, kind of like in that Georgia game, the margin, even if it happens at the very end, will get past 13 and a half. So I'll lay it with Bama. That's a pretty public square pick. And a night game in Norman, I mean... They lost to Vandy on the road. You're telling me if Oklahoma can't find a little bit of offense that they can't win this game outright? This is a game where I I, I would have to bet Bama laying the points, but I, I think Oklahoma absolutely could win this thing outright. Iowa State and Utah. <sighs> Give me the seven and a half. I'll take the points with Utah. I, I think the, I have faith in, in Whittingham. I have faith in the coach. Iowa State's going to win, though. Marshall and ODU, no idea. Texas A&M and Auburn, kind of a gross game. I guess give me Auburn on the money line. I mean, I don't know. Texas A&M, they're kind of deflated, but they're in a spot where they need this, man. They need this so bad. But the pressure, the pressure of needing it sometimes is a negative. I feel like everyone's going to bet them. Auburn's so bad. The spread's only two and a half. I think it's a trap, man. I'll take Auburn. I'll take them to win the game outright. Vanderbilt, LSU. If it wasn't a night game, I'd take the seven and a half. I think Vanderbilt's had their fun. Uh, it was a fun year. They're fun to watch. They were, you know, they're competitive. Not a bad team. LSU off the loss, though. Now they're back home, night game. Brian Kelly, 13 and one, you know, in home night games. Seven and a half, though. That's a lot of points. With a bad LSU team versus a pretty capable Vandy team. I just don't think the athletes quite match up. I'll go LSU here. I'll go LSU here. And I and I hate I can't believe I'm even saying that. Um, not really a fan of LSU, and I'm kind of a fan of Vanderbilt. So that's tough. It's just I think Vanderbilt's just had their fun, man. They just had their fun. Cincy and K State. Give me the points with Cincy. I mean, Kansas State, man, they're they're such a wild card team. They have such a high variance. Kansas State, if they play their very best football, I mean, and I'm talking like their best game ever, like they're playing their best ball, I think they could get anybody. I think they could get anybody in the country if they had just everything working right in a, in a particular game. I think the quarterback for Cincy, as long as he doesn't make stupid like choices like he did in that West Virginia game, if he plays a clean game, I think Cincinnati can win this game outright. Uh, since he beat Arizona State fairly easily, Arizona State just beat Kansas State. No, in sports betting, one plus one does not equal two like that. Uh, but at least gives you a little bit of an idea. And in the Big 12, pretty much any game, any given week between any two teams uh, can be an upset. Eight and a half, it just feels a little bit steep. I see it more of like a four-point win for Kansas State. I'll take the points. VTech and Duke. <sighs> I guess I'll take the points with Duke. I don't really like that one. Colorado State, Fresno, no clue. Air Force, Nevada, gross. U USC, UCLA. I'm going to go USC here. UCLA has been playing so much better lately. Very, very impressive. I think the coach is doing a pretty good job. Um, it's nice to see that team is more mentally engaged. Um, but I think Washington kind of re-solidified where they should be. USC just has better athletes. 4.5. Reasonable spread. I'll lay the points. I don't think UCLA quite can keep up offensively. And look at the over in that game, too. Over 51 and a half for sure. Memphis, Tulane. Lay it. Lay it. Tulane needs style points. Lay it. Um, actually, that is a futures bet. That's another week. I see the 28th down there. So that's it. That's it, guys. There's another week. Um, again, you see it on the screen. Let me get rid of, uh, Jesus, where'd that go? What are we doing here? Whatever. Um, guys, 3, 4.3, 3.3, 4.4, 3.1. Are we going to have our sixth winning week in college football in a row? Yes. This is a very, very good week. Very, very good week. I have like four or five games that um, not only do I like, I think, it's an, I think you could argue that it's a smash spot. I mean, an absolute home run. Um, like I said, a lot of the picks I've given out already are three, four units a pop. Um, they're big ones. We've been killing NFL as well. Dropped a little bit of money in NFL last week. That just means we're going to have a big bounce back week in NFL. 
college keeps rocking. NFL gets back to our normal spot. And um, I think, I think finally it's this week where we get our first 20 unit profit week. That is what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for the big heavy hitting week. This is the week to do it. Middle of November, just before the holiday. Um, this is the smash spot. This is it. Really, really excited. Um, guys, before you exit out, don't forget to hit that like button. I got to see the likes for these free picks, man. 16 and 7. I got to see the support. Or this will be the final week. So it's in your hands. Just uh, meet me in the middle. You know, just trying to make a deal with you guys. I hook you up with an amazing free pick record. And in return, I just need a little bit of support. I think it's more than fair. I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video.